everybody, I'm Allie Buckman with the Potomac Bee Company, and I am going to show you today how to make this arabesque bracelet. The arabesque bracelet, um, I think it looks like a nice um, Eastern kind of tapestry. It has a nice Xing design in the middle or a nice patchwork design on the outer edge. And I think the repetitive kind of symmetry of the patterns is really what led me to the name of the bracelet. If you need any of the materials to make the arabesque bracelet, we'll put a little link here down the left hand side with links to all the different materials that are used in this design. The main bead that's going to be in the design is the Arcos bead, and I'm using the Crystal Labrador Fool, or that silver color, and for my bracelet, um, I'm using 28 of the Arco speeds. If you need it to be a little bit longer, you can just add four more to that. So you're looking at 32 beads, and you can see kind of how it fits on me here. It's just a tad little big on me, and the bracelet itself is um, just under seven inches, so depending on the length that you need. You always can also extend the ends if you need a couple more, a little bit more length, but about 28 to 32 Arcos is what you're going to be using. Also down the center, we're using some Rose Montes in the SS12 size. You can also use a larger size if you want. Here's just to show you kind of that look with the larger size. This is an SS20. I have the SS12 in the middle, or stone size 12. And because we have a grouping of seven of the kind of little arabesque designs there, I use seven Montes. We sell them in a pack of 12, so you'll have plenty. You can even make a matching pair of earrings because it's a lovely design for just uh, one earring if you want to do that as well. The other thing that we're going to be using is 15 o seed beads. We recently got in a lot of the, or all of the Mayuki's new Duraco colors. They're nice, bright, opaque, fun colors. And I decided to go with a C theme here that we'll be building today and using the um, Delphine and the Catalina. So we're using those two pretty C colors, the C blue and the C green color, to really make that silver pop. This is a bracelet that's really going to change its look depending on what seed beads you use. The other thing I did at the connection points, which you could use many different things, you could use a Mino speed, you can use an 80 seed bead, you could use a bicomb. I'm using the Potomac Crystal Rondelles in that uh, smoke color there in the three by, or the, I'm sorry, the two by three millimeter uh, Potomac Crystal Rondelles. The whole bracelet is going to be closed off with a cup button and I have the opal color here to stay with that kind of underwater sea theme and I'm using 0 .006 wildfire beading thread in the white color. To thread my needle, a size 12 needle because I am working with 15s is what you're going to want. You can start out with a 10 but a 15 as we get to the middle section and kind of going in and creating that little patchwork design and our little X design here is really what you're going to want is to put a 12 needle on there. We are going to use about 5 feet of beading thread and always handy when I'm starting um, and getting ready to end my designs. I like to have a thread zap or a cord cutter, a thread burner to really get the thread ends down and kind of secure any knots or any stitches that you may have to add any thread onto the project. I also like to have a pliers handy to flatten out the end of the thread if you do use the burner so that way it's going to make it easier for you to thread your needle. I am working on a bead on it board here. This is um, an 8x11 board in the poppy color. Um, is what I have and we have them in all different colors. A nice workable surface is really what you want to be using rather than just using a counter or anything. It'll make a difference, a huge difference for the beading. It makes it easier to pick up your seed beads and all of that. So without further ado, we're going to get ready to start our arabesque bracelet. And again, if you need any of these materials, the little drop down that was on the left hand side or underneath the video in the video description details, there's a little show more button. Click on there and it'll give you links to all of the products as well. So to get started, we're going to need some piles of our seed beads and our Arco speeds ready to go. So to get started, we have our 215 0 colors laid out and our 3 by 4 millimeter rondelles. I forgot to mention um, that I am working on a bead on it board, so if you do want a workable surface, it's a nice workable surface for you. We're going to be creating our little open crosses, basically, of our arabesque design here by using four of our Arco speeds, setting them up so they're facing one another, and then also so they're facing in towards one another as well. Because there are three holes to the Arcos, 
we're only really going to be concentrating right now on two of those three holes for each bead. To get started, we want to start with a stop bead. So this is five feet of my beading thread again, and I have a stop bead on it. A bead that's going to come off the design is not part of the design, but is just going to keep the beads from falling off the end. To start, we are going to begin with one of our Arcos beads. To begin with the Arcos, the Arcos sitting in the U-shaped, we're going to go up the right hand hole of the Arcos. So again, there's three holes in the Arcos. You want to go up the right hand hole. Coming out the side of the Arcos here, I'm going to go ahead and add in nine of my seed beads, whichever color you want to start with. You can start with the blue, you can start with the teal, that's up to you. But right now I'm going to add in nine of my seed beads. So nine of those 15 O's. Once nine are on, let them drop down next to your Arco speed, and they're going to sit right on top there. The next thing to do is add your Arcos that is going to frame in towards the previous one. So we're going through the right hand hole with the dome shaped like a rainbow shaping down. Go through the right hand hole, and then you're coming right out the top. Once I'm out the top, I'm going to use one of my 15 O's in the color that I just used, one crystal, and one 15 O's in my next color. Let that drop down next to your Arcos. Start the pattern again, getting ready to begin with the Arcos facing that cup shape or that bow shape down, go through the right hand hole, put on nine beads, this time in that brighter green color. And you can do this all in the same color if you want, that's up to you. So I put those nine beads on and then I'm going to take my next Arcos and put that on. And let that drop. So you can see the pattern right now is just the Arcos hanging out with the 15 O's in between. When I get to the end here, add the same color of the 15 that I just finished, one of my crystals, and then one of the opposite colors of 15s. Let that drop and then start the process again. Arcos through the right hand side, going up out the U shape, Put on nine more of the blue and then once we have those nine on we'll put on another Arcos. This time like the rainbow facing down going through that right hand side. I'm going to continue this design the whole length of the bracelet going through and adding in my first layer here this first side of my beads and adding in my Arcos beads. At the end of the line then, I've added on my seven groupings here of my beads, my five of my dark blue, and then my four of my kind of sea green color here, that pretty Catalina color. And what I'm going to do is get ready actually to add my clasp before repeating the exact same thing down the opposite side. To put on my clasp, I have my cup button handy here. And I'm going to finish off with a crystal just like if I were continuing on to my next grouping of Arcos. I have my 15O in that blue color, my 3x4 millimeter rondelle, and then I'm going to put on four of my 15Os in that Catalina color. Put on your cup button so that the dome side is facing down. At the top of the cup button, I'll use one blue, one of the greener ones, one blue, 15 now, and come down the opposite end of the cup button. That's going to pop some of that color just a little bit right there in the middle. If you want to, you could have also used a crystal there in the middle as well. 
on the opposite side here, I'm going to come down, like I said, the opposite, the opposite uh, side of the arcos doing the exact same thing. When I'm coming out the cup button, I'm simply going to add four of my 15 O's, another one of my crystals, one of my blue 15 O's, and then catch that second hole, or I'm sorry, the third hole of the arcos bead on the opposite side. So you can see that look right there. It's going to look the same on each side. Coming down now the left hand side, all I'm going to be doing is the exact same thing. The arcos are already in place and you're just going to make sure that you're picking up the third hole of the arco speed. So on go your nine seed beads in whichever colors you need to do. And then you're going to sew down through that third hole of the arcos which is gonna make this almost like a parallel bar when you're looking at it. There you have that little parallel bar. And then after you have the parallel bar from the first one, you're gonna continue on with the second. In between, just like we did on the first row, adding the 15 L, the crystal in the 15 L, and then down the next arcos. going to keep a nice tension on this because the thread is running the whole way through the starting line. You can also tighten it up a little bit once you get your actual stop bead off. But on go nine more of my green and then down through the next arcos. So you're just going to continue down now the opposite side adding in and making those two parallel bars of the arcos bead. When you get to the end of the design, you have both of your lateral lines there. And what we're going to do is put on the loop for our cup button on the other side to go through. On the cup button side, we added a crystal on either side of the arcos. But on the loop side, I like to bring it back in so it's together into a diamond shape. Basically, it's going to hold and have a more secure loop where it's smaller at the beginning because you don't want it slipping off your bracelet. To do so, add on to your thread four of your color of your seed bead that you're coming out of, one of your two by three millimeter crystal, and then you want to put on a bunch of your uh, 15 O seed beads. You're going to make it big enough so that way your cup button can fit through, but not too big that the loop is going to drown it and then it's going to kind of pull the design more apart and it's not going to fit. Also, if you would be using a metal clasp, here is where you would want to add your second end of your metal clasp using some wire protectors. Once you have the appropriate number of seed beads on, go back down through the two by three millimeter rondelle. And that's gonna pull that loop then, or that row of seed beads into a loop. On the opposite side of the crystal, add four more seed beads in the blue color. Skip over the stop bead because that's all it is, is just a stop bead and go through the arco speed as well as the first of your 15 O beads on the opposite side of the arcos. We're getting ready now to actually put in our second set of our arcos having that cross section of that arabesque. To do that and to put in the cross section, we're always going to be coming in and out of the last 15 -0 right next to the arcos that are already there. When you pick up the arcos and you come down the left side and then also the right side, we're always going to be shaping the arcos like a rainbow or facing in towards the project. Coming out the 15 -0, go up through the right hand hole of a new arcos. Add on three of your 15 O seed beads in the same color that's below and go down through the middle hole of that same arcos bead. What that's going to do is just decorate the edge of the arcos there and put a little bit of uh, seed beads there so that way it decorates and you don't actually see any of the thread. When you're coming out the center hole of that same arcos, pick up one of your 15 O's in the opposite color of your seed bead 
and go back up through that same hole. That 15O in the opposite color is going to act like an anchor and hold that arcos in place and hold that thread in place. Coming out the top of the arcos then, go ahead and grab three more of that same 15O color and then come down the left hand hole of the arcos. So we're hitting all the arcos holes on this one at one time. That's going to decorate that top again with those three seed beads. When your thread is coming out then the bottom hole of that third arcos, take your needle through the 15 oh before the arcos that was already there, the arcos, and then the 15 crystal 15 selection. Give a nice tight pull and that's going to bring that arcos right next to the beads that are already there. To start our next arcos in place, sew through the arcos along the line and the first arcos going through, or the first 15 now, I'm sorry, on the opposite side of the arcos. Pulling that nice and tight. Adding your next arcos by picking up another one, going through the right hand hole when it's rainbow shaped. That brings you out the top and you're going to grab three more of that 15O color that's running in the lines below it, down through the center of the arcos bead, give a nice tight pull and get it close along the edge, add in a 15O of the opposite color and go back up through that same center hole of the arcos. Give a nice tight pull so you don't have any thread showing, on go three more of that baseline color of your 15s down through the third hole of the arcos bead on the left hand side. Again, give a nice little tug. And then once that arcos in, is in place, sew through the 15 before the baseline arcos. as well as the Arco Speed, the 15 Crystal 15. And there you have the pattern. So I'm gonna go through again the Arcos the 15 and then get ready to add in my next Arco Speed. On the opposite side, I'm doing the same exact thing. When I get to the end, we're gonna go ahead and come down the cup button then, reinforcing it and starting the same exact thing on the opposite side where the arcos will face inward and create that nice little arabesque cross symbol. Now that the lateral um, lines that we tied into all of those and we have our arcos on the opposite side, I went ahead and after putting on my last arcos here on the left hand side, went up through the arcos and reinforced the loop coming down on the other side. I also have uh, a short piece of thread left, you can see. So I'm going to use this opportunity to actually tie off the starter thread and then also to add a new thread in the same place. You probably have enough thread to continue because your design you would have had five feet of thread. I usually do less than that just so I stay in frame on the video. But for my section here to add, to end the thread, even if you have a long enough piece of thread, this is a good time to end that starter thread. To end the starter thread, all you're gonna do is tie a knot between the two threads. Give a nice tight pull and tie the knot again in a square knot. That's right over left and then left over right. Once I have those tied down and good, I'm gonna take my initial starter edge here and just burn down that thread, not to the very base, but just enough so you know where it is. To start a new piece of thread, in case you need to, you're gonna to connect to the old piece of thread, much in the same fashion of tying those knots. The new piece of thread that I have here in my right hand, I'm gonna tie around the old piece of thread. So the old piece of thread is now in my right hand, just hanging out here, and I'm tying the left with my left hand a new piece of thread. That thread I can move up and down along that thread line 
which I'm going to push it down nice and tight, and then simply tie the two thread ends together. After I have more of this thread on, I'm going to go ahead and create the little design in my um, in my uh, Arcos here, sorry, and in the Arcos to get that arabesque design, we're going to have kind of a linear design that we create and have very much that actual woven pattern look. I'm going to thread my needle and then pick up with you guys to go ahead and add my extra seed beads and my Montes in the middle. So to start in between my Arcos, in between that little flower that we created, I'm going to take my thread and needle and go through the last hole of the Arcos bead as well as down the line of seed beads here that I have on this left hand side. I'm going to take the needle and thread the whole way down the left hand side there until I get to the last bead and I'm going to pop my needle out. So just like we've been doing where we kind of ignore that last bead and don't go through it, we're continuing that in this design as well. So I'm not going through that last bead and I'm going to create a bridge basically at the bottom of this Arcos file flower going from the left to the right. To do so in that same blue color I want you to pick up five of your 15 OC beads, jump over and thread through the line on the left, ignoring that first seed bead, and going through all the way through the middle seven beads, coming out right before the last one. So you can see I didn't go through the first one, I went through the middle second, and then I came out before that ninth bead. That pulls those five right there to make a rectangle start. Five more beads go on, again in that blue color. Ignore that first seed bead after the Arcos. And sew into that left hand row, going through bead, going through four beads there. And then coming out. So I'm going to go through four beads and come out, which will actually be the fifth bead in the row, but you're only sewing through four because you're missing, or you're not sewing through that first fifth one. That's going to create a little bit of a rectangle there with seed beads. When you're coming out this fifth bead, I want you to add one of your green beads, and this is going to get us that woven look. Go over to the beads that you just added and go to the middle bead, which would be the third bead and sew through that bead. Again, add another 15 in your alternate color. Come over here on the side and you want to go through that fifth bead in line on the left or on the right side, just like we did the left. Pick up another 15 and sew through the third bead here at the bottom. So you're sewing through the middle of all of the lines of the beads. Pick up another bead here, come back over to the starter side, and sew through the middle bead on this left hand side. That's going to put those four C beads right on the edges. And when you pull it nice and tight, you get that nice pull in, that nice little Xing effect here of that continued floral design that we're going for in this arabesque. To actually add the Montes now, we're going to add the Monte, and the Monte has two holes, but we're actually only going to be going through one hole of the Monte. Because it's small, it'll stay down in size. If you do want to go with a larger Monte, I want to go with like an SS20 um, here in the middle, you do want to sew through both sides. So you're going to connect first to the side that we are, and then to the other side as well. To put the Monte in place, I'm going to add my Monte through one of the holes, it doesn't matter which one, and pull my thread and needle through that Monty. 
position the Monty in the middle of your little tapestry center. And the Monty, the thread is coming out the left-hand side of that top blue bead. I'm going to go into the left-hand side of this bottom slash right-hand bead. So the thread's coming out on the left there and going into the left side of the bead right below it. Give a nice tight pull and make sure to flip the Monty up so that way it's sitting nice and centered. I'm going to sew back through the same hole of the Monty, pulling the thread through slowly because it can be jagged in there. And then when I get to the top, I'm going to sew through that same bead that I was going through to start, but this time going in right and coming out on the left. And that's going to get that first little tapestry section here on my arabesque bracelet and add that first Monty in. To continue, my thread is coming out that middle bead there on this left hand side. I'm going to sew through the rest of the beads on the left hand side. So right down through the line and that's going to put me out right at the corner there at the Arcos bead. So through the Arcos bead and you get ready to start again. I'm going to sew through the 15-0, through the crystal and through the 15-0. And that is going to get me to this next section then of my Arcos. So basically we're at the starting point again, getting ready to add that little middle to the Arcos. And I'll do it for you one more time. We're going to sew through the Arcos, through that outer hole, and also down through the seed beads coming out right before the last one, which would be the ninth. So I'm coming out between the eighth and the ninth bead. Picking up that same color seed bead, so that sea foam green color there, I'm going to add in my five 15 O's, jump over from the left hand side here to the right hand side, and sew up through seven beads on that side skipping the first one and skipping the last one. On go five more of that same color, 15. And sew through beads number two, three, and beads number two, three, four, and five with your needle coming out right at bead five, which is gonna be the center of that previous row of nine. Grab a 15-0 in the alternate color to make that nice patchwork look and pick up the middle, that third bead that you added there at the baseline. Add another 15. Pick up the fifth bead in line on this right hand side. So one, two, three, four, and five. Coming out that bead, add one more blue one. Pick up the third bead at the top of the Arcos. And then adding in your last 15-0 here, go through that initial starter bead, that fifth bead in line. At that point then, after making this nice little fabric design. Give a nice tight pull with your thread and that'll pull all of those beads in. You can see it looks pretty without the Monty too. If you would just want to keep it, you don't have to have the Monty in. But to put the Monty in again, the thread's coming out on that left hand side of that fifth bead. We're going to sew through one of the sides of the Montys. Hold it right on top, making sure that the Monty is facing up, so you can see the pretty crystal and shine. And the bead that sits directly across from it, we're going to sew through that bead and come out. 
Again, make sure that Monty is sitting nicely. Once you're through that bead, we're going through the same hole of the Monty that the thread's coming out of. Pressing down with my finger so I know it's hard to see, but that's gonna put that Monty right smacking in the middle. And then back through the 11-0, going from right to left that the thread was initially coming out of. At the same time, I'll go back through that entire row of seed beads so my needle is coming out right there at the baseline and at the base of the Arcos. There we have our second little section here and on to the next. So you just continue the whole way then going in and creating that little tapestry design, putting the Montes right along the top and middle. So I finished the tapestry design there with the Montes in the middle and then the um, little kind of floral tapestry design there along the outer edge. And I'm coming out the very last Arcos bead here that I've gone through, added my Monty to the top, and then sewed through the Arcos. What we're going to do now is make our Arcos beads kind of sit in place and really kind of edge the outer line here. And you're going to do that simply down the one side, and then we're going to do it down the other. If you want to, you can actually reinforce the clasp one more time. Since we have already have it going through twice, I'm not going to worry about it. What I am going to start to do is create and catch all of those designs and sew through the crystal and catch the design as well to make those arcos kind of line in place and to really finish this off. You can choose to do it in the same color of those 15s or an alternate color, but I'm coming right out of the arcos bead here and I'm going to add five C beads. I'm going to do these in my alternate color. So I have on five of the more green color of my beads and then once I have on those five seed beads I'm going to sew up through those three seed beads right on the end of the arcos when I sew through those three arcos beads then and I'm right in the middle what I'm actually going to do is add another bead of the same color that is used in the Arco. So I'm going to use that blue bead and then I'm going to sew through those three beads along the side. That's going to really fill in that gap right there and have the start of the bracelet there. To fill in then from the end of the Arcos to my crystal, I'm going to be using six seed beads normally. So this time I'm going to go back to that greener color pick up six of my kind of random seed beads here. This is a great way to clean up your bead mat or your bead board as well. After I have on six, I'm gonna sew through the crystal that's already there and right out after the crystal. And that connects those lines. Now again, I'm going to switch colors, so on go six of my blue color, sew into my three of my more green color of the Arcos on the outer edge, and that's going to connect right there. On goes one more of the green to connect the two groupings of three. And now I get to switch back to my blue and six more of those 15 O's go on to my needle. After I put on my six, grab that center crystal. If you need to, you can kind of see what I did last time was kind of move that crystal with my fingers just off to the edge a little bit. And that'll make it easier for you to get in between the crystal and the seed bead. So right out after the crystal, and then continue that stitch. And you can see that really kind of brings in that color um, match there and also lays out those Arco beads. I'm gonna go straight along the edge now, adding in those six beads of the alternating color, and then the one bead between the two groupings of three, that would be the same color, and then six more beads of the alternate color and catch into the crystal. 
So I'm going to do it down one side and then we're going to come back up the other side. So you can see how it's starting to look here, getting kind of that fun mixture of color. If you want it to be more consistent and more the same color rather than a varying color, you could also use a consistent color on the outside. So you could use all blue here and then all green here, or you could use a completely different color if you wanted to use silver seed beads or another one, you could really play that up as well. This is gonna be one of those bracelets that I mentioned before, depending on which colors you use, it's gonna look completely different. So if you're going with a black and a red or the black and silver or the black and gold, um, it's gonna be a much different look than kind of these fun tropical colors here. So the whole way down this right side here and then back up the left side after I am gonna go through and reinforce my loop. So at the end, all I'm gonna do is come down through the side here, go into my little V, through the crystal, through the loop, through the crystal, and then back out the side and right up the alternate side there. Once you get to the very end here, you can see you go down the one side and then, like I said, reinforce and go right down the other side. It's a really fun bracelet. Um, you can really change up the look, like I said, a lot with color. This is one of those that doesn't use a ton of beads, uh, but the color can really make a difference. What you pop in the middle of the Monty, whether or not you keep it plain and you can see on the opposite side not having the Monty at all what it looks like, but it's a nice bracelet, it's a nice width, and it really isn't going to, um, really gonna bother you on your wrist doll because it's not super thick. And I like that's a, a more simplistic idea with the actual Arco speeds. One thing you can do if it kills you, I know some people are funny and they don't like an empty hole. Um, so when I was showing this to somebody, they said, but you didn't use that hole right there on the Arcos. If that kills you and you want to, you can always put some seed beads and connect the two, run a line of thread down the middle and actually use the outer or use the middle here line as well. Just running down the middle then, you could connect into the two that are by the sides or take it up the side as you're working with it. So once you're done this arabesque bracelet, all you're gonna do is, I've kind of gone through, reinforced the clasps, come back through, and then all I'm gonna do is tie some square knots. My thread is just long enough to uh, do the end with. I'm gonna tie some square knots here and get uh, my thread burner out and burn the actual thread off for the bracelet. But the seed beads along the side make it sit really nicely. It doesn't take away to the design and it adds a little bit there for that outer edge, really kind of pulling that in together, keeping with that nice almost quilted design. Again, if you do need any of these materials, you can go back to the beginning video. You can check on the links there or you can go below the video to the little show more button about the details. There's a little down arrow, you can click on that and it'll give you links to all the products that were used here in this arabesque bracelet. You can always also subscribe to this YouTube channel, follow us if you like what you see. You wanna see more things like product updates on Arcos, when we get new things in, new designs, um, new beads that are coming in as well as new findings, as well as stitches and just kind of general updates of what we at the Potomac Bead Company are excited about, what we're happy that you're excited about, and what we have to offer you and bring to you new to the table. Also, you can interact with us online by um, visiting our website, potomacbeads.com. You can also visit us on Facebook at uh, our Potomac Bead Company site, or you can join our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making. Interact there with some like-minded people that love to make jewelry, whether or not it's mixed media or wire working or seed beading. You can see all their lovely designs there, give opinions, um, help people out, and really just interact on a great level there. As always, thanks so much for watching everybody and have fun making this arabesque bracelet.